thanks for the organising committee for uh, letting some Queenslanders into South Australia, which is good. Plenty of you guys coming up our way, so it's good. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, talk to you a bit about what we do in our business and and I guess that this my talks why I've been asked to talk is really about the adoption rates of technology. I'm s sort of continually frustrated by more cooler gadgets and not really focused on actually adopting on the ground. And this is the sort of thing that drives me crazy. Um, this is old data now, but and many of you may have seen this before, but you know, I started working with auto steer technology back in the late nineties. And I, you know, started with the early vision systems and into GPS. And you can see that, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, adoption rates have been incredible. And now about 80 percent of all farms have have auto steer on their tractors. Uh, and you know, th these sort of adoption rates are pretty much identical to the US, except we're a little bit ahead of them, which is no surprise. Um, what frustrates me now, we've got 70% roughly yield monitors, uh, and, that, and those yield monitor, uh, that yield monitor slide basically is the changeover of harvesters in Australia, essentially, because a few people bought them in the first place, but now every head has got a yield monitor. But only half the people that have got a yield monitor have ever, ever looked at a map. And only 10% of people that have done that have actually ever done anything about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of fed up with that, that we're not getting this adoption that we should be. And before we came along, uh, GRDC did some work to show that only 4% of farmers in Australia looked at satellite imagery. And I've been playing around with satellite, satellite imagery since 2003. So 17 years later, and we're still having this discussion. So we created data farming back uh, two and a half years ago to solve this problem. It's to solve the adoption problem. Because uh, if we don't change something fundamentally about the way we do precision ag, nothing's going to bloody change in the paddock. And the other thing that really drives me nuts is seeing this every day, where a typical yield monitor and a yield map from a, from a harvester, on the left is the, the variability in that yield. And I can tell you now there's not one paddock in Australia that hasn't got at least 200 300% variation, not one. I've looked at thousands of these bloody maps and there's not one paddock that hasn't got at least 200% variation. And we keep talking about feeding the world and all the rest of that stuff and we talk about 1% yield improvements from new varieties when it, the answer to our problems is sitting right under our noses. So if we don't start solving these problems, we're never going to increase our productivity, we're never going to get management on our costs. We're putting the same inputs on that, on that paddock year in, year out, and nothing's changing. So what we did is we went to something and we said, how can we get people adopting some technology in this precision ag space on their properties? We immediately went to satellite imagery because there's no humans involved in satellite imagery. I don't know if you know that. It's the best thing that can happen. Because as soon as you start putting humans into things, everything goes pear-shaped, all right? So, we started, and luckily the Sentinel satellites are now available across uh, the world, thanks to the European Space Agency. So every five days, like Phil had talked about in the last session, we're delivering free five-day satellite imagery anywhere in the world. And you go, well, why have you done that for free? Because I don't believe that unless you experience something on your own property, you're never going to make the next step. And every solution that's on the market right now is so super complicated that you're never going to start at the ground zero. So you've got to experience it on your own property to make sense of all this. This is a view of NDVI, which we've talked about already, but it's the vegetation index on a regional scale. And you can see a little tiny red box in the middle is one paddock. Um, and it doesn't, that, that's good for the regional wide assessment, right? You can see the brown areas there where there's no crop and the bluest areas are really, really good crop. If you look at that one red paddock zoomed in, that image really is bloody well useless, right? For that farmer, for that agronomist, absolutely useless. Um, what you've got to do is cut that image down to the field boundary and really stretch out those differences. So this is the same image on the same day, except it's clipped to the field and it's stretched the colours. Because if I'm an, 
an agronomist or a farmer, I want to know where's the good and the bad parts of that paddock on that day. So that's not saying that those brown areas are crappy crop, it's just saying that's the worst part of that field on that day. So when I'm doing tissue sampling or I'm checking for insects or whatever it might be, I want to be directed to the good and the bad areas of that field as quickly as possible. So we're not trying to create more work, we're trying to be more efficient at our work when we, when we talk about crop checking. If that sort of makes sense uh, to you and you want to do something different in that paddock in real time, we've developed a little tool which turns that, that image instantly into a zone map. And you can add your rates, you pay 40 cents a hectare and you get a zoning file which you can load straight into your machine and go and do variable application. We're trying to reduce the complexity. We're trying to increase the speed of getting through this process. That used to take uh, you know, a guy sitting at a computer two and a half hours to do something like that. We're trying to get people in the field to do it instantaneously to close that loop as quickly as possible between collecting data, deriving the insights and creating an action at the end of it. So we've got to close that loop up and get it as, as quick as we possibly can and as efficient as we can. So that's how we've been monetizing. Um, we've also developed some new products like this, which stacks five years of satellite data together. Now, if you want to go and source sample, you've never been on a property before, you go, where the hell do I start? This is the sort of tool where you can pick the peak images each year uh, or the, the images that you want and stack them all together to create a multiple product. Um, very good for that soil testing type of approach. Uh, keeping in mind that you're selecting those images based on what you know about that field. You know, avoiding flowering canola, for example, is a bloody good idea because it really upsets the NDVI images. So this is a rapid way of getting data on a paddock that you've never been into before to get your process started on where, where do I start with this whole, whole um, you know, precision ag sort of space. The other thing that we've recently launched is um, our ultra high res product, particularly in relation to the vineyards down here and working with Ollie and DJs down here to get this product out this summer. But if you look at, that's our 10 metre free data there as you see it right now. It's reasonably, you know, it's got some value but not very much. Um, it, you know, the 10 metre stuff's much more suited to broad acre, big farms, um, you know, on the central western New South Wales. When we're talking about vineyards, you know, we need to go from that to this. And, and this data now is quite readily available. It's not routinely captured, but we can task the satellites to capture this data. And we're talking about 400 times more detail than that 10 metre stuff. So we're talking half metre pixel here from satellite. There was some discussion in the last session about 30 centimetres. You can get 30 centimetre res from satellite now. So we're delivering that on a web platform to the guy in the paddock basically to, to go and scout those fields based on much better resolution data. You've really got to get that level of res when you're talking about anything intensive, horticulture, tree crops, that sort of thing. We do also do a lot of work in cotton and rice and they also want high resolution down to a row level. So it's not just for horticulture but there's certainly, um, certainly other products. The key thing here is too is the price point. I've seen so much stuff come into Australia in the tens of dollars per hectare, um, not delivering value. And I think we've come at a price point trying to get adoption um, in, a, in, a, in a reasonable sort of fashion. Um, you can also get the true colour image from that day. So unfortunately I've seen a lot in the images coming through, the bushfires and the burning of certain vineyards down here, it's quite sad. But you know, the colour image con confirms that you've got no cloud. Um, that's, that's another really important thing too, if I go back to the other images, we allow you to look at each colour image so that you can see if there's any cloud or cloud shadow over your paddocks. If you don't do that and you just rely on the data, you're, you're destined for disaster. You've got to understand that there's got to be cloud free to get good, good information. So if, if any of you want to have a, jump in and have a play, feel free. Uh, you just got to sign in, uh, sign up, log in datafarm.com.au, there's a big green login button that you can't miss. Um, all you need is an email and a password. I don't really want to know anything else about you right now. Just create an email and a password. We've got to get low barrier to entry here. That's another reason for getting adoption. We can, you can straight away upload boundaries that you've already done and Phil and I have been talking quite a bit about how do we 
import boundaries from other software. Agwell, Back Paddock, if you've got a KML or a shapefile, we're trying to make it easy for you to upload fields that you already got in other programs and not redraw them all. But if you need to redraw them, then we've got simple drawing tools. And all you've got to do is click on one of those paddocks once you've imported it and all the imagery appears for every five days um, for the last three years. It's freely available. Um, so our model has worked, um, thankfully, because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, we've got 15,000 farms now using the platform. 90% of those are in Australia, and these are our Australian uh, customers, mostly in that sheep wheat belt down in Victoria, New South Wales. And people have painstakingly clicked on 75,000 paddocks, uh, which scares the hell out of me because that's, that's a lot of drawing that people have done. But the good thing is that we can import those and now all those fields are sitting in now uh, in, in the software, um, which is just an incredible amount of data. One thing we are working on, which you may be interested in, is because there's been 75,000 paddocks that people have manually drawn in, we've developed some tools and we're still refining these, but we're actually automatically drawing every field boundary in Australia. And that's so that you don't have to click and draw thousands and thousands of bloody paddocks. Like, we've got agronomists that have, that have 15 farms and some of those farms that have 100 paddocks each. So how on earth that must take them days to draw all their bloody paddocks in? So we've got to get quicker processes to get people engaged with this, and a paddock is a, is a natural scale that we're going to operate at for machinery, for uh, recommendations, the whole lot. So we're trying to speed up that process by doing that, and that's all done off satellite imagery interpretation automatically. So they're the sort of things we're working on. <clears throat> 